Good morning. Good, um, good Friday morning. Friday, the 19th of February, 2021. So <laughs> personally, I, and I know everyone's in different circumstances, like a, a good friend of mine is um, homeschooling her two young boys and she's pulling her hair out. She's like, oh my God, you know her, Tim, actually. She teaches at Butterfield. And uh, she's like, oh my God, homeschooling two boys. And they're really close in age. And then other people might be like, wow, luxuriating in someone I was speaking to a while back. She used to, pre-pandemic, she'd commute into London. Two hours in, two hours out. A four-hour commute every day. And I said to her, are you missing the commute? And she was like, absolutely not. So we're all in these... Um, different circumstances. So personally, I've been only teaching online since um, mid-March last year. So like 11 months I've been doing this. It's a bit like, people would ask me pre-pandemic, people would say, will you teach online? Or will you run trainings online? And I was like, absolutely not. And that was all I've been doing. So great teaching of things change. So let's begin by sitting, please. So in terms of things change, let go of how you might have sat in the past. So I know some of you have been in the field together. So letting go of the field, you're now in your bedroom, rather than a field, so letting go of all of that. And sitting in a shape that supports you. So that might mean your legs are straight, as an example. Or maybe you're supporting your knees like this. Possibly you're sitting in a chair. You're most welcome to sit in a chair. If you ever go to a yoga class and the teacher says you must not sit in chairs, what's that? Masturbation. I would leave. Leave quickly. So sitting in this way that supports your body. And I know some of you all have heard this suggestion in the past, but if sitting is a regular part of your practice, then I would advise you to change the way you're sitting. So for me, my default, left foot, right foot. So right now I've got it the other way around, and of course the other way, another way of sitting, legs folded back. Then I notice, oh, I'm gonna have to, support, maybe, support this um, knee. So for those just arriving, I'm suggesting you go in on the chat bar and you write your name, your location. So not where you'd like to be. Oh, I'd like to be in Bali. <laughs> Let go of Bali, <laughs> wherever you might be. Or maybe on occasion, someone was in a class yesterday and she was in Mumbai. And I was like, oh, what's the weather like in Mumbai? She was like, it's really nice. So I said, like, moving on. So, and then just thinking about what animal might describe your emotional, physical, mental experience right in this moment. So I put down flying dragon. So let's just take a few moments to arrive. Hmm. So some of you are, one of you is just down the road from me. Others are within the M25 and beyond the M25. So arriving. And feeling your way within. And I notice, what am I bringing with myself today?
So we need to arrive to be here. And also, I believe the importance of having what you might describe as an approach of inclusivity. So maybe you're here and you're feeling, maybe your animal might be like in the back garden here, we have squirrels bouncing around and then the cat chases them and it's all a big game. So maybe you might have that kind of quite bouncy energy, or maybe you're feeling a bit flat, fed up. I was thinking one of the joys of teaching on Zoom is I get to meet people's pets and their children sometimes. Just coming back. Feeling your way within. Few more moments, really kind of dig in, feeling within, because there are layers and layers, endless layers. So what this exercise can do is help us to be more appropriate as practitioners, more wise in terms of how we practice. Because say if you're feeling really quite done in, overwhelmed, fed up, then making the practice, you might describe it as more nourishing. But if you have that spring squirrel-like energy, then you could be more actively exploring edges. So from here, if the eyes are closed, gently raising the eyelids, keeping the gaze down. So avoid moving too fast. Take your time. Eventually, however you might arrange your legs, they're your legs, bring the feet to the front. Let's just take a few moments, just kind of leaning back into the hands, leaning back into the hands. So I know this is the element of air. And I know some of you have got a lot of experience. I know some of you are maybe less familiar with uh, this practice, the yin yoga practice. What I wanted to bring in this morning was a map coming from the Chinese, a Chinese model of the five elements. So in terms of the five elements, I wanted to apply it to um, directions. So let's slowly come to standing. So once you've come to standing, stand in a way that again supports you. So standing up and then just place the hands on the lower abdomen just a few moments just resting the hands on the lower abdomen so what we began doing was an inward exercise so in terms of this five element map the inward exercise is actually associated with water. And the season for water is winter. So it really feels um, here in North London, we're on the cusp of spring. The daffodils are coming up and uh, there's some daffodils by Manjushri, by the statue.
and then release the arms down. So we're just going to do some movements with the breath. So keeping this all soft, soft, soft. With an inhale, just raise the arms about as high as the shoulders. And then exhale, bring the arms down. So moving with your own breath, soft elbows, soft knees, inhale, lifting, about as high as the shoulders, exhale down. See if you can feel the air through your fingers. So inhale, lift. Exhale down. So slow and steady breathing, breathing in air. But in the five element model, there is not an air. What there is, what happens is the water feeds wood. And wood, in terms of directions, we might talk about wood as being upward, like we're now standing up. Seasons, wood connects with spring. We're just on that cusp of spring. So now let's take the arms out wide. See if you might imagine, remember those, so I was a flying dragon. So maybe, what could you, it's like um, perhaps a cormorant or a heron. One of the big pluses of the pandemic for me personally has been really finding out about the local area, really finding out about the local area. And one of my discoveries, you know, I've lived around this area for a long time, is Woodbury Wetlands. It's a really beautiful place. And um, I remember going there a few months ago and seeing a heron. Maybe you might imagine you're like a heron or possibly an eagle. So still the breath moving the body. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, lowering. So spring becomes summer. And the element for summer is fire. So wood is a fuel for fire. And then maybe you might imagine what's an image for summer like Imagine the midday sun. So the direction would be outward. Just a couple more times. See if you can feel the air. And then the next time you bring the arms down, let's just do a little bit of just very gentle, soft, just swinging from side to side. It's a bit of easy rotating, easy rotating. So coming back to the five elements, the five elements, fire becomes earth. So my partner and I were very fortunate, we have a garden here. And in the garden, good morning, Nick. In the garden, there's a fire pit. And we had a, a fire a few days ago, and fire does become earth, the ash. So in terms of season, earth is late summer. So in this model, there are actually five seasons, late summer, time of abundance. Imagine blackberries on bushes, time of abundance. So gradually slowing this down, slow this down, slow this down. And then let's just do a little bit of lateral stretch. So inhale, raise and go, go the right way. Exhale down, inhale, left. So lateral stretching of the side body. So in the five element map, they have these energy channels. And side bending is a way of influencing the energy channels that are associated with wood, which is the gallbladder and the liver. Just a couple more times.
So next time, if you began with the right, next time you take over the left, just come back down. And then what we're going to do now, so staying standing. But of course, maybe for one or two of you, standing does not work. So you don't have to take your tops off. <laughs> we're not going to get any hot and sweaty. This is slow. This is cool yoga. We're going to do a body tapping exercise. So make your left hand into a loose fist. Give yourself the freedom to tap firmly or softly because this is your practice, this is your body. And we're gonna start tapping just below the right collarbone. This is a point. So from the China, this Chinese model, lung one. The element associated with lungs is metal. The season is autumn. So we're just tapping our lung one, potentially good for respiratory issues. So clearly at this time of year, it could be very useful. So now let's go along the inside of the right arm, the yin side. We're heading towards the right thumb. So this is the approximate pathway of the lung channel. Come to the thumb, right thumb, roll the arm over, and now go along the outside of the arm, the yang side. This is the approximate pathway of the lungs partner, the large intestine. And then come into the armpit, your right armpit, where the heart channel starts, heart one in the armpit. And now again, along the inside, the yin side of the right arm, heading towards the little finger, approximate pathway of the heart channel. Come to the little finger, roll the arm over. Now let's go along the outside, the yang side of the right arm. Heart's partner, small intestine. Let's just come back to our lung one for a moment. So anything that supports our respiratory health is obviously a plus, plus, plus. So tapping lung one. In a little while, we'll do a breathing exercise, which is also very good for our respiratory system. And now let's go along the middle of the inner arm, the pathway of the pericardium channel. Pericardium channel ends in the middle finger. So roll the arm over. The pericardium's partner is the triple heater, the outside, middle of the outside of that right arm. And then swap over. So the right hand, the loose fist, just below the left collarbone, lung one. So this point has various names because it's being translated from a different language. A couple of names I particularly like are central treasury and middle palace. I like those two names. So now along the lung pathway, the inside, the inside of the left arm, come to the thumb, roll the arm over. Yang side, outside, large intestine. Come into the armpit, the left armpit, heart one. And now come along the inside, yin side. Yin is inner inside of the left arm to the little finger, roll the arm over, go along the outside, the yang side, yang outer, yin inner. So this is the heart's partner, small intestine. Let's come back to our lung one for good luck. Let's tap our lung one. And now we're gonna go along the middle of the inner arm, path of the pericardium channel. Pericardium channel ends in the middle finger, roll the arm over. Then from the ring finger, the triple heater outside of the arm. And now come to our heads. Tap, 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 tapity tap. So we can approach this exercise in different ways. Maybe you could see this as a way of enhancing energetic flows in the body. We're gonna look at a particular point in a moment that you might experience that. Or perhaps simply as a way of connecting to our content feeling our bodies, come to the top of your head, the top, 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 
the crown of your head. This is a point called 100 meeting points. So tap your crown, tap your crown, a way of lifting up the energy, lifting up the energy. Just tapping here. And now let's come around the jaw, common area to store tension. So maybe we can tap out just a teeny amount of some of the tensions. We all have tension. If you do not have any tension, then really you should not be here. You should be somewhere preaching about how we need to change the world rapidly. Come down the side. Remember the side bend stretch? So gallbladder, outside of the legs. Go down the outside of your legs, so bend your knees. Outside legs, come to the feet. Maybe take a moment to marvel at your feet. It's like, wow, look at these feet. And now come up the inner leg. So this is the um, liver channel. Remember, liver is um, the element is wood. And now come to your lower back, kidney area. Tap, tap, tap. Your bottoms, tap, tap, tap. And then from here, let's go down the back, the back of the legs. So the path, approximate pathway of kidney and bladder. Unsurprisingly, those channels are associated with water. And now at the front of the legs. So let's take a few moments at the um, front thighs, the quadriceps. So stomach and spleen associated with earth. Remember, the season for earth is late summer. And then just come back, let's come back inward. So resting the hands, however you prefer. I know some systems say this way, some systems say that way. Just whatever feels most comfortable for you. So standing up, standing up. What I see, what we do as practitioners, so we're all practitioners, whether you've been practicing for six months or 20 years, these, it's like wings of a bird. Imagine like how a bird needs two wings to fly. So we need the wing of insight, which is what we did right at the beginning, that kind of noticing what we're bringing, the wing of insight. Just now noticing how you're doing. And the wing of cultivation or influencing such as that body tapping exercise. So now just release and just kind of soften this and just come into kind of just, so knees are soft. Explore what you might feel between your hands. So obviously there's air in between your hands. You know, some, so sometimes closing your eyes can be helpful. We can get a bit self-conscious with our eyes open, but if closing your eyes makes you feel in any way uncomfortable, keep your eyes open. Feel free to bring the hands in close, take the hands out wide, feel free. Some of you, I know some of you have done this exercise before, so maybe you're kind of playing around with whatever, if anything, is in between the hands. See what you might notice. Being curious. I still have a memory of the, uh, one of the first times I did this. And it was when I was, it's a long time ago, I was teaching and in Shavasana, I was just kind of doing this. I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. See what you might notice. And then wherever you might feel you want some support. I talked earlier about nourishment. Maybe in your tummy, maybe in your heart, your head. Just take a few moments, just kind of bring the hands to wherever that might be for you personally. Maybe your hip feels sore. So maybe you bring your hands to your hips. And then what we're gonna do from here, 
we're going to fold our way forward. So staying standing, as you fold your way forwards, you know, so many ways we can do this. You could hold above your knees. You're most welcome to use a wall. Very welcome to just lean into a wall. Or possibly you're holding below your, below your knees, towards your ankles. If you wanted to make the stretch stronger, you could hold your elbows. So folding forwards. Of course, you can also sit in a chair. The knees can be bending or the legs are straight. So this is your practice. This is your time. So just as a, a rough guide to what we're doing. So folding forwards, please. Folding forwards. As a rough guide. So remember that inward quality, stay folding forwards, that inward quality. See if you could perhaps notice where you feel this stretch in your body. Because if you're feeling the stretch more between your waist and your head, you need to adjust. Essentially, like if you feel it more in your mid back than say the back of your thighs or around the back of your knees, you need to adjust. So the stretch is stronger below the waist. So in the area from the heels to the hips, rather from the hips to the head. So give yourself permission to adjust. Be, be skillful in what you're doing. And then we're on the cusp of one more minute. So an essential characteristic of the yin yoga practice, often what is most memorable about what we're doing is the staying in poses. And it reminds me, there's a line from a, a Mary Oliver poem, stillness, one of the doorways into the temple. So half a minute more, staying still. Do what you need to do to be able to stay still. So now from here, so in a yin yoga practice, this would be called dangle. Some of you might know it as um, Uttanasana. We're going to gracefully come into a squat. So squatting, squat down, please. You might think, oh, Norman looks comfortable. The reason I look comfortable is I put blocks below my heels. Ross, you look very comfortable. Give me a thumbs up if you're comfortable. Thumbs up, are you comfortable? Are you put? Some people are just like, I can spend the next hour here. Some people are like, oh my God, I confess, I had cake for breakfast. So do what you need to do to be able to stay, which could also include the option of like putting your bottom down on something like this. This is a valid option. And something I've been talking about in teaching, I call it, or it could be, it could be called egalitarian yoga. Egalitarian yoga, which means that all options are equal. You know, what we're doing here, so this is not a favorite of mine, absolutely not. And I find it, to stay in the shape for a while feels a real struggle for me. You know, if you feel very comfortable here, if you wanted to like accentuate the edge a bit, you could raise your arms like this, maybe. <laughs> but remember, we're gonna be here for about the next 10 minutes. No, no, that's... No, it's not this shape. We don't stay for too long here. <laughs> Some of you might have the hands together in prayer position, like, please, God, do not let us be here for too long. But this is an excellent way of accessing the lower legs. Anatomically, what are we doing? Um, 
flexion of the hips, stretch of the front thigh. So remember that element of earth. So just coming back into the, the model, the earth, it took me a long time to kind of understand this, but over time, earth becomes metal. So clearly this takes an incredibly long time, but earth does become metal. And then metal is a container for water. So in terms of season, we go from late summer, earth, to autumn, metal. And the direction of autumn is downward. Imagine the leaves coming off trees. And then autumn becomes winter. So we're back to water. Remember, water is inward, a kind of more um, contemplative experience. So now from squat, gracefully release. Come to hips on the ground, bottom on the ground. And then what we're gonna do next, we're gonna come into a posture, some of you might know as constructive rest. I would like everyone to have something below your head, whether it's a cushion, a yoga block's quite high, but I shouldn't have said everyone. I have come across a few people that do not need anything below their heads. I've got a blanket, but nearly everyone. And then you lie down like so. So the head is pillowed. You can see my head, head is pillowed. The feet are flat on the floor, feet flat on the floor, head pillowed, feet flat on the floor. Knees are raised. So this is a, a yin of yin poses. We're very close to the ground. So you could perhaps contrast the energy. Remember when we were standing up and then I talked about standing up, kind of the upward spring, daffodils, upward. And now we're close to the ground, constructive rest. A great posture for bringing ease into the back of the body. So if a person says, oh, my back's feeling a bit sore, this is one of the moves I would suggest. So what I like to do here in constructive rest Just see if you can feel the breath in your body. Notice that word, if. Because sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's not. common area for the breath to be felt in the body can be around the center, we could call that the diaphragm area. Abdomen, chest, diaphragm in between. Another area people sometimes feel it is around the back of the throat or around the, the nostril, the lower lip, tip and nose into the nostrils. Or maybe you're not feeling the breath. You know, this is a practice, and a practice is a verb, rather than noun. We're practicing. So we're practicing with the aspiration of the less known becoming more known. We're practicing with the intention of being more awake. So what we're going to do from here, we're going to do Two poses, stay on our back. So lying down, please. Stay on your back, lying down. The first pose is a reclining rotation. So please bring your inner feet and your inner knees together. And then if you have space, reach the arms out wide. So Ross, knees up, knees up, knees up, up. That's it, up. Feet flat on the floor, rotation. Get your inner knees touching, inner knees touching, inner knees 
touch. And then take your hips a few centimeters over to your left and then bring the knees to the right. So the hips going a few centimeters to the left as a way of lessening any strain into the lower back. The knees to the right, of course, feel free to use bolsters. Feel free to say, place a block between the right knee and the ground or in between the knees, in between the feet. And then maybe you might bring the knees close to your right shoulder, which takes some movement more up the mid spine. If a person's pregnant, they'd want to keep plenty of space between the thighs and the abdomen. Now, if you want to make the stretch stronger, a simple way of making the stretch stronger is pressing your right hand into your left thigh. Another way of altering the angle here could be reaching the left arm behind you. Remember the heart channel as an example. However, if you've reached your left arm behind you and then you start feeling a bit of like tingling or just simply feels too strong in that left shoulder, please bring the left arm down. Because what we do in the yin practice is, I talked about staying, is staying in the shapes for several minutes. So even if you've done lots of like vinyasa fast yoga, this is different. And then as we come towards the last minute, another way, if you wanted to make the stretch stronger, is you could wrap your left leg around your right leg. So these are all ways of making stretch stronger. Remember egalitarian yoga, that you're welcome to make the stretch softer. You're welcome to make the stretch softer. All options are equal. And then we're coming into the last half a minute. Could you notice how do you feel? Essentially, do you react or are you responsive? If you're reactive to having to be here for another half a minute, ease the edge. If you're responsive, stay as you are, or maybe make the stretch a little bit stronger. So half a minute more, please. So now from here, take your time, bring the knees back up, place both feet flat to floor, both feet flat on the floor. Take a, a few breaths, almost like absorbing the echo of what we've just been doing. So not going over to the second side just yet. Take your time, this is slow yoga. So if you have space, remember the arms reaching out wide. If you do not have space, you can have the hands in like cactus arms. Hips a few centimeters over to the right. Knees now to the left. So an advantage of doing two sides, what is technically described as an asymmetrical shape, is we can reflect on the first side. Remember flex, reflection of inward energy, water, reflecting, and then you apply, almost like you apply the lessons of the first side to the second side. So say if you came out of the first side, you're a bit like, whoa, that was strong. Then you make this side more supportive. Talk about bolsters, cushions, pillows, blocks. Like one of my favorite ways of doing this pose is putting a bolster in between the knees and the feet. So, and so this side would be the left knees on the ground, in between the left knee and right knee and left foot and right foot. And then remembering those ways, if you wish, if you wanted to accentuate, 
like the left hand could press into the right thigh. You could alter the angle of the, of the right arm, but clearly the right shoulder is different from your left shoulder. So pay attention to, well, if you've done that, well, how does that feel around the shoulder? You know, I would advise if you feel tingling to ease the stretch. And then as we're coming towards the, the last minute, so there's that another option of stretch being stronger, if you wish, the wrapping of the right leg around the left leg. Whatever you're doing, can you be still? So maybe you might imagine someone saying, Claire, can you be still for another minute? Or Vasily, can you be still for another minute? And you feel like, I'm not sure. Then honor that information and ease the edge. Or continue as you are. Or maybe making the stretch a little bit stronger. Just a little less than a minute. So now from here, taking your time, this is slow yoga, unwrapping your rotation. So one more pose staying on our backs. So reclining butterfly or Sukta Baddha Konasana. So yes, Ross, now the knees can go out wide. The heels can be close to the hips or far away from the hips. You're most, so you're lying on your back, soles of feet together, knees out wide. You're most welcome to use a bolster or blocks to give support to the, um, the rotation around the hips and the stretch of the inner thighs. So that's definitely an option. For nearly everyone, the heels close to the hips makes the stretch stronger. The heels further away from the hips makes the stretch softer. And what I would propose, if you have your hands just quite close to the hips, for most people, turning their arms out feels comfortable. I know a few people actually prefer the palms down. So finding what is most comfortable for you. And then what we're going to do here, we're going to do a breathing exercise. So remembering the element that we're in is air. So breathing air, breathing in, breathing out. If this is possible for you, because on rare occasion it's not possible, breathe in through your nose, in through your nose and out through your nose. You could call it nose breathing practice. The more we use our noses to breathe, the better it is for our health. You know, our noses, it's like our noses are our own antiviral unit. So again, this is something we need in these current days, these pandemic days. So breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your nose. And we're going to do a form of breathing that I know at least uh, two or three of you have done before, has different names. One of the names for it is coherent breathing. We're going to look at the possibility of breathing in for six seconds and breathing out for six seconds. If you're particularly interested in this form of breathing, I've written an article about it based on a wonderful book by James Nestor that's up on my website. If breathing this way causes you any discomfort, emotional, physical, let go of the exercise, prioritize yourself over the exercise. So wherever you are, whether you're in West London, Manchester or North London, let's all be breathing together. So 
Breathing in, please. And then breathing out. Now breathing in, without strain, remember without strain. Breathing out through the nose, all the breath through the nose. Breathing in. Breathing out. 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 Breathing in. <clears throat> Breathing out. Breathing in. 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 Breathing out. So as best as you can, maintaining that form of breathing throughout the practice. Obviously, our breathing is influenced by the, the poses we're in. So as best as you can, breathing steadily, slowly, that suggestion of six seconds for the inhale, six seconds for the exhale. And then, in terms of coming out of reclining butterfly, bring your hands to your outer thighs and just very briefly come back into constructive rest. Both feet are flat on the floor, the knees are raised. And then remember, we did that exercise of trying to feel the breathing in the body. What I'd like you to do now is see if you can notice which nostril is more active? I think for myself, it feels like my left nostril is slightly more active, I think. Sometimes the difference is imperceptible, sometimes the difference is obvious. If you can perceive a difference, now roll to the side of the more active nostril. So say you're, you feel your right nostril is more active, roll to your right. If it's your left nostril, roll to the left. If the difference is imperceptible, just roll whichever side you wish to roll. And then just take a few breaths, just a pause. So we, we paused at the start. We paused when we were standing up. So pausing, having rolled over. The inward direction. And then take your time, slowly, 
come up to sitting. And then once you arrive at sitting, what we're going to do from sitting is we're going to come into a posture that in yin yoga is often called dragonfly. So if you're accustomed to other forms of yoga, it might be called Upta Vista Kanasana. I had to pause for a moment. Upta Vista Kanasana. Of course, you can sit on blocks. If a person is pregnant, I would recommend rather than doing dragonfly, they do something like butterfly with the soles of their feet together. Remember, we were doing the reclining butterfly. A great option for dragonfly. So if you happen to have yoga bricks and you're familiar with the yin yoga practice, this is an option I often actually do myself. And I'm a big fan of altering angles, which essentially means doing things a little bit different, rather than getting stuck in the same way. I must do the primary series. I must do yin yoga, doing things differently. So those could be suggestions. And then have the hands, maybe somewhere around the hips and just remember the upward, the spring energy, spring energy sitting up and being conscious of the space between your navel, center of abdomen, and your sternum, center of the chest. We want to keep this space open, which might mean that for some of you, you're going to stay with the hands by the hips. Another way of doing this pose is um, taking your legs up the wall. Though if you did dragon play like that, I'd want you to support the legs somehow with a belt or blocks. So upward, spring, wood. Maybe some of you have the mobility to come forward. So in coming forward, so then that accesses the inner thighs, the back of the thighs. There is a rotation in the hips. coming towards a shape where you can stay. So that might mean you keep your hands by hips, or it might mean your head is close or on the floor. A shape where you can stay, and also a shape that you're, you feel confident you can walk away from afterwards. So really, there's no point in having your head on the floor. You're like, wow, look at me. I'm so advanced in my practice, I have my head on the floor. And then you're like, the wow becomes ow. <laughs> it's like, ow, I can't walk away. So very important. So if you're unaccustomed to the yin yoga practice, even if you've done lots of other kinds of yoga, please err on the side of caution. So coming back to this five element model, one of the things I love about it is it recognizes like the essence of change. And to me, practice, I, there are postures in my own personal practice that I've retired from, that I no longer do. So maybe a, a few of you might be familiar with postures like Marichasana D. No longer do Marichasana D. No, no, no. I'm, I'm in my late 50s. You know, to me, practice is about maintaining what I've got rather than trying to achieve a pose. So it's recognizing change. It's like the reason I have this haircut. I was looking at you, Martin. <laughs> the reason I have this haircut is I've lost my haircut on the, my hair at the top of my head. <laughs> Sorry, Martin's giving me a thumbs up. So I refuse to do a comb over. <laughs> Some of you are too young to know what a comb over is, but it was a kind of male hairstyle back in the like the 1980s, a comb over. Absolutely not. I'm not going to do a comb over. It's like this is what happens with life. The, we get older, bodies change. We're no longer determined to do marriage as an D, as an example. So we're here for two more minutes. So I want each of you, remember that idea from earlier, reactive or responsive? Do you react? So reaction would be like, oh, 
my breathing, I'm losing my breathing. That's why I was emphasizing this space between the navel and the sternum. Do I react or am I responsive? I'm quite calm about being here for that long. Or maybe, because this can certainly happen, maybe it, because we've already been here for like nearly three minutes, maybe you're like, wow, actually I can come further forwards. Whichever option you've chosen, maybe you've come up, maybe you have your hands by your hips, whichever option you've chosen, maybe you're in constructive rest, whichever option you've chosen, Focus on breathing and stay still. One more minute, please. So now from Dragonfly, take your time, if you fold it forwards, really, you know, be conscious of the transition. Ease your way up to, to centre and then big stretch of this area. Use your hands to help, so bring the hands below the knees and actually lift the knees up and draw the knees in. And let's just take a few moments giving ourselves a hug. Because as human beings, we're herd animals. We need a herd to both survive and to thrive. And one of the great losses of the pandemic has been, for many of us, this loss of physical proximity, this loss of, literal loss of hugs. And one of the wonders of the Buddha field can be a place of many hugs, much connection. So let's release, and now, Come onto your hands and knees. And what I'd like you all to do is to have, whether it's a blanket or a cushion, below your left knee and bring your right foot forwards. So the right foot has come forwards. You have a blanket or a cushion below your left knee. I know sometimes for some people, this level of pressure into the knee feels too much. So you could always tuck under the left toes. See what I'm doing here, tucked under the left toes. Another option, if it feels too much for that back knee, is placing a block below the shin. So the knee is actually lifted off the ground. If you have a lot of mobility in your body, you could be helped by placing a bolster or blocks below that left thigh. Stability. In my opinion, stability is more important than stretch. And then maybe the right hand is outside the right foot. Maybe the right hand is inside the right foot. For those of you who are particularly interested in the human body, there's a, a new book that's just come out, hot off the presses, called Hypermobility on the Mat. So hypermobility is a condition where someone is more mobile in their body than average. That might be a way of describing it. And it's not necessarily a plus. It's not necessarily a good thing being particularly bendy. There is a relationship between being particularly bendy and more likely to be injured. So this book, Hypermobility on the Map, by a teacher, Jess Glenny, who's been long-term teacher, long-term practitioner, and she's also highly mobile, hypermobile in her body. So she's writing from personal experience. So we're going to be here for two more minutes. Maybe you're content where you are. Maybe you prefer to come into Charles Pose. Very welcome to Charles Pose. Or maybe a couple of other options you might like to do. There is the, um, I call it flying dragon. Remember, that's my, that was my animal. 
So flying dragon, the hands on that front knee. Another version is wing dragon, where you're bringing your forearms towards maybe even on the ground, and then you really rock out that um, right knee. So then that's a big stretch into the um, inner thigh area. So whichever version you're doing, you know, dragon's quite a yang of the yin poses. Remember when we were in constructive rest, I said that's a yin of the yin. And now this is a yang of the yin. And it's still the same characteristic to be still. So one more minute, whatever you're doing, being still, please. So one of the ways you can transition out of dragon, as an example, you could straighten that right leg. So just take a few breaths, sinking your hips towards your left heel, bowing dragon, so folding forwards over that straightening right leg, bowing dragon, thus accessing the back of the um, right thigh. And then eventually step back, that right leg. So remember, the blanket is below the right knee and step forwards the left foot. Another example of using support below the thigh would be say if you've got a bit of um, a strain in your hips, then you get a bolster or something or blocks. So stability. If you wanted to make the stretch softer, simply reduce the space between your left heel and your right knee. If you want to make the stretch stronger, increase the space. So the person in charge of your practice is yourself. It's almost like standing in your power, deciding for yourself, oh, well, what's gonna work well for me in my practice today? And then part of that, it's like letting go of, oh, this is what I should do. Letting go of how it might have been for you in the past, and as best as we can. being present in this experience today. So in terms of today, and I know the body changes from day to day, I know the time of day influences our experience and the poses. I believe that the priority needs to be our breathing. So avoid what you might describe as sacrificing a breath on ultra posture. We're just coming towards the last two minutes. So two more minutes. Maybe you just stay as you are. Maybe you go into a child's pose. Or maybe it could be the flying dragon, hands on that left knee, or the winged dragon, where you bring your forearms towards the floor and then you're rocking out. So really coming up up onto the um, outside edge of that left foot. So quite an interesting move for the um, inner left thigh. And then whatever option you've picked, not that one option is better than another option, it's about your, it's like applying your intelligence and your intelligence is being informed by your experience. And again, we're in the second side, so we can always reflect back to the first side. 
And then this key quality of yin yoga. You know, most other forms of yoga were only there for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds at most. Here we're holding the same, the poses for like several minutes. One more minute, stillness, please. So taking your time, avoid sudden movements. That can be a cause of injury. We could experiment, explore the bowing dragon. So you straighten that front leg, the left leg, just taking a few moments, bowing yourself forward. So sinking your hips back towards your right heel. And then through the magic of evolution, we're going to evolve our dragons into sphinxes. So back bend, come onto the front of your body and bring your forearms to the floor. If the person is pregnant, what they would do or could do is put a bolster below the top of their thigh so then there's space for the tummy. I know for some people, this can feel really quite strong in the shoulders. So what you could do is put a bolster, as soon as I've done this, or block, so it just takes away down to the shoulders. So for me personally, Sphinx is another yang in the yin. I'm quite actively pressing my um, forearms down, so accentuating the, the back bend. But maybe you might prefer to almost slump down. It's not that one is right and the other is wrong. It's about finding for yourself, okay, what, how does that feel in my body? So remember that applying uh, intelligence. So in Sphinx, low back, extending the low back. If it feels a bit much, then one way of lessening the stretch could be taking your legs out wider. That could lessen the stretch. Another way is just bring your hands further forwards. You're welcome to be flat on the floor if you want it. That in itself is still a bending of the back, being flat on the floor. If your back feels a bit twingy, low back, it might be helpful to get more engaged, like literally um, engaging your thighs, pressing your front thighs down and inner thighs towards each other. So we're going to be here for three more minutes. So you go, wow, three more minutes. Some of you are really at ease here. So if you're really at ease here, two ways, if you wish, to make the stretch stronger. One way is raising the lower, lower legs like this. It's a bit like a yin version of um, Danyarasana, the bow. Another way would be straighten the arms. So you lift up like this. If you've gone for the straightening the arms option, what I tend to suggest is the hands are turning out a little bit. My hands are about as wide as the mat. And if you've gone for the straightening of arms option and it's feeling too strong, then give yourself the freedom. You don't have to stay in a shape if you're struggling to stay. And a great guide to struggling is how we're breathing. Another insightful guide is possibly you might imagine there's a mirror, maybe down on the ground in front of you or straight ahead of you. And it's like, how's my face? Because 
Maybe you're frowning. Maybe you're biting your inner lip. Maybe you're about to like, no, I'm, it's all too much. That is information that implies you need to alter the edge. So we're coming towards the last minute. Do you respond or do you react? If you're responsive, continue doing what you're doing, or maybe if you want, make the stretch stronger. If you're reactive, I recommend you ease the edge. And whatever you're doing, stillness please. So now from here, take your time, slowly. Maybe you might imagine you're moving through water. Come down. If you've got a bolster there, just shift it to one side. Come down and eventually be flat on the floor. And once you're flat on the floor, so again, if a person's pregnant, they keep the bolster below their thighs. If you have space, could you reach your arms out wide? If you have space, reach your arms out wide. I know not everyone has space. So Esther, I can see you're a bit more limited in space. So do what you can do. And then as long as this is allowed by your neck, turn the head and look towards your right hand. So you're now resting on the left side of the face. So looking towards the right hand, resting on the left side of the face. And then keeping the arms as they are, lift the head and now look towards the left hand. So you're resting on the right side of the face. And then paying attention to your neck. Now bring the hands back and place the hands so that they're a pillow. And if you can, rest the forehead on the hands. So stay lying down. If you can, rest the forehead on the hands, just a few breaths, resting the forehead on the hands. And then from here, slowly take your time, use the hands to help, push yourselves up, come onto your hands and knees. And what we're gonna look at is the possibility of child's pose. So if you can, hips on heels. If that feels too much for your feet, try a rolled up blanket below the ankles. If it's too much for your knees, try a block or a book in between the hips and the heels. If you have a bolster, maybe you might like to put the bolster in between the legs. If you have a bag of rice or a sandbag, maybe you might like to place that on your low back sacrum. So coming forwards, child's pose. If child's pose feels too much for you, what you could do is lie on your back and hug your knees to your chest. So coming forwards, child's pose. Or lying on your back, hugging your knees to your chest. Sometimes in child's pose, people rest with the forehead down. Sometimes people turn their head. So those five elements, it's giving us a sense of the, of the dance. This dance of life, the certainty of change. And this is a poem by a Polish writer, 
set off the loss. So for those who are turning their head and Charles Bowes, change turn of head, please. We were riding through frozen fields in a wagon at dawn. A red wing rose in the darkness. And suddenly a hare ran across the road. One of us pointed to it with his hand. That was long ago. Today, neither of them is alive, not the hare, nor the man who made the gesture. Oh, my love, where are they? Where are they going? The flash of a hand, streak of movement, rustle of pebbles. I ask not out of sorrow, but in wonder. So if you're turning your head, change your turn of head, please. I ask not out of sorrow, but in wonder. So ways of helping us to wonder, curiosity, waking up, Letting go of the shouldism as best as we can, just being here. So for each of you, whatever posture you've taken, On this cusp of the last minute, so if you're turning your head, you can change to the bed. Can you be still? Can you stay? One more minute. I sometimes feel with Charles pose, it's the quintessential yin yoga pose. Quiet and soft. So from the quietness, the softness, minimize movements, stay as close as you can to the ground and just ease your way up. And eventually take a, a few moments, bringing some freedom into the feet. So in Charles pose is that in a literal squat in the feet, so you could lean back into the hands, releasing around the ankles and the knees, so knees were in flexion. So staying close to the ground, minimizing movements. So I can see, I can see at least three very handy looking sofas. So some of you might, it's a posture called astronaut. So you're lying on your back, you got your legs up on the sofa. It's a fantastic posture. If you're doing astronaut, that's a sign of being highly advanced in your practice. So this is the final pose. So make yourselves comfortable. If you're lying down, I really recommend something below your knees. Remember the pillow below your head. If you have a weight, perhaps you place that on your tummy. Blanket over the body. Although it's got so much warmer. So doing what you need to do, minimizing movements, maximizing comfort. So in the final pose, lying down, 
in the front. Feel free to put your socks on. <laughs> put your gloves on. Put your woolly hats on. Whatever you need to do, lying down. So child's pose, a yin pose. The final pose, even more yin, more contact with the ground, body spreading out onto the ground. So there's the, the downward, the leaves falling off the trees. And then that can encourage the inward. And we need, the, it's, like, it's about balance and it's about recognizing the cycles and seeing the cycles the image that comes to my mind is like a disco ball, run like a linear model, disco ball, many facets, multitude of aspects. So we need the downward and the inward to balance the upward and the outward. If we're just in the upward and outward, we become depleted, exhausted. Equally, if we're just in the downward and the inward, we might become passive or complacent. So after the movements we've been making, remember how we started? Just the simple checking in, the arriving, attempt to consciously include whatever we might be bringing. And then we flow from that into the upward of standing, those various movements we did, like the loose rotation, the lateral, the body tapping. And then we fold it forwards, dangle, dangle became squat, squat became constructive rest, so the yin of a yin, constructive rest. And then ours, our rotation, the butterfly where we did that breathing exercise. And then the butterfly evolved into a dragonfly. The dragonfly became a dragon, dragon, sphinx. Sphinx was child's pose, child's pose now this. So just take some moment, just as best as you can, wherever you are, allowing release. And within release, there is ease.
So now from here, giving yourself the freedom to stay just as you are, if you wish. This is your practice. If you're going to begin movement, take your time. Let it be gentle and soft movement. Maybe just simply moving the fingers. Perhaps a little bit of shifting the head from side to side, wriggling the toes. So if you're in the astronaut and you're coming out, maybe you rest the soles of the feet on the edge of the sofa. If you're lying down, maybe you bend your knees and you rest your feet on what's been below the knees with the feet on the floor. And then wherever you might be, if you're coming out of the final pose, bring the knees to the chest, a moment of giving ourselves a hug. And then easing over, remember ease, easing over left side, please. Everyone rolling onto your left side to honor the fact that this has been a yin yoga practice. Pillow your head, maybe with the left arm or a block or a cushion. Chin towards chest, knees towards chest. If possible, the eyes are closed and just take the moment of inward. Right now, contemplate for yourself, how are you doing right now? Remember that approach of inclusivity? Ah, oh, this is how I'm doing right now. And of course, within includes head and heart as the whole body. And then from here, taking your time, slowly ease your way up. So eventually, a key word in yin yoga, eventually, eventually sitting. Remember from the start, you sit in whichever way works well for you. And then maybe you like having the palms pressing or maybe you prefer the hands on the body or keeping the hands down. Bring the chin towards the chest. So it's like connection. We connect our chins to our chest like we are connecting our heads to our hearts. Because so much of this is about connection. Connecting within with the aspiration of connecting to all that is around. So if the eyes are closed, gently raise the eyelids and eventually raising the head. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rebecca and Claire and Deirdre and Kathy and Dee and another Rebecca and Ross and Nick and Esther and Martin. Thank you so much for being here. Feel free to ask me questions if you wish. Feel free to unmute yourselves. And I have a monthly newsletter where I have details of workshops and other events I run. If you'd like to receive it, you could come in on the chat bar and pull your email address or go onto my website. Remember this app, Article on Breathing. So if you're interested in breathing, there's an article about it on my website. Thank you. Feel free to ask questions. Thank you. Thank you, Deirdre. Thank you, Kathy and Claire. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you. Woo! I feel amazing. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you.